Well, if baking pumpkin bread in November makes me basic, then I'm basic, baby. So I made a pumpkin dessert for our church trunk or treat thing last week, um, but I only had a huge jar of pumpkin, so I still have like a small can of pumpkins worth. So we are gonna make the pumpkin yeast bread that's in this book this week, and I'm pretty excited to do it. So let's get started while my kids are gone with my husband and it won't be stressful to try to cook. We got two packages of yeast going in here. Stir that up a little bit and you're gonna set that aside while I work on the rest of it. I need to scald a, a cup of milk, which I've never done in a recipe. I've burned milk in sauce recipes, but not scalded it for bread. So I'm gonna put this on medium and we will get started with this sucker. The internet told me to put it on medium heat in like a wider pan so that it doesn't take as long to stir frequently and to look for the bubbles that will appear on the side. Now I just turned this on and I just dumped this milk in so I know those bubbles aren't it. That's just from being jostled about a bit. So we will keep an eye on this. In the meantime, I need to melt four tablespoons of butter. Add the melted butter. I think this milk is almost ready. I checked the temperature, but my thermometer kind of sucks. So we will see. It's getting close though. And we've got a cup of pumpkin. Oh, that's a nice sound. <laughs> the internet says to let the milk cool down for like 10 minutes so it doesn't kill my yeast. So we're going to let this sit and I'm going to work on the dry ingredients. All right, we need five cups of flour for this one. I think I get two loaves out of this, so I'm excited. We need four tablespoons of sugar, which is, you know, a fourth of a cup. So we're just going to use a fourth of a cup. Okay, this says a teaspoon of salt, cinnamon, and allspice. I don't have any allspice, so we are going to use um, that delicious stuff. Pumpkin spice instead. Um, and I think it'll be just fine. Here's my salt. And my cinnamon. And my pumpkin spice. Or... All spice if you've got it. Also, look at my dinner if you can see it. I'm using the Melissa Saves cheesesteak recipe, and we are excited for dinner tonight. And we will stir this up good. All right, back to this. The milk is chilled, not chilled, but you know, cooled down. We're gonna add it together, give it a good stir. We're gonna add two eggs to this and then we will add this very frothy <laughs> yeast. All right, KitchenAid is out, it's business time. I'm just gonna keep adding it in. This is pretty sticky, so I'm gonna add a little more flour. Maybe because a little flour fell out. <laughs> okay, I've got my dough ready, um, I think. <laughs> this was like a weirdly sticky dough, and no matter how much flour I added, it seemed to get like stiffer while it was mixing, but then when I touched it, it was just all over my hands, so I don't wanna like add too much flour, so we're just gonna go with this and see how, how it works out. So I'm going to cover it with a dish towel and I'm going to set it right over here where the um, kitchen is so that it can be a little warm from the crock pot that's going. And we're going to let it double in size. Covered bread bowl makes me feel like such a homemaker. On that note, I just want to say cooking from scratch, having a super clean house all the time, homeschooling your kids, not working outside of the home, that, that's not the stuff that makes you a homemaker. Being a homemaker um, means that you make your house a home. It's the feeling that people get when they're in your home. Um, the love, the warmth, the welcome, all of that. That's what makes you a homemaker. Not your job status, not your marriage status, not your kid's status. Um, all of that is part of life. Um, I do follow some homemaker, not homemaker, homesteading accounts on Instagram that are a mix of like homesteading and Christianity and homeschooling. 
Um, and some of them, some of them I need to unfollow because they come down hard on working parents. Um, and it sucks. It's rude. It's, and it's very much coded in a layer of, well, this is what God wants. I'm like, yeah, well, God wants our families to be fed. So if you're ever like feeling like you're not a homemaker because you work outside of the home and your kids go to daycare or whatever it is, or you don't have kids or you got divorced or really whatever it is, that's not being a homemaker. A homemaker is whoever, or is, is whatever the feeling is at your home that helps people feel loved and welcomed and nurtured and taken care of. Um, that's being a homemaker. Don't let anybody online tell you otherwise. You're a homemaker. First rise is done. What should I do? Karate punch it. Hiya. Whoa. Okay, this is the second rise. I'm actually really excited for this. This has turned out better than I thought it was going to. And the baby's here this time. Are you ready for a punch, bud? Ready for a punch? Well, not for you, for you. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> what? Is that crazy? Is that crazy? Whoa. Okay, I didn't do the best job of splitting this evenly, but now it's, you know, they're in the grease pans and they are going to rise now until they get a little over the tops of the pan. With how wonky that dough was at first, I am really excited for how this is turning out. I put this in the oven at 400 degrees for 10 minutes and then I reduced it to 375 and then it baked for another 30 minutes till it got like golden brownie. These loaves look just really good. Like it's a very pretty loaf and then they feels really sturdy. Like it's, it's a solid loaf. This looks awesome. I've got it raised up so I can try to get the light from outside. <laughs> but, oh man, this has a very nice smell to it too. It's a little pumpkin-y, but not too strong. I'm excited to try it. And because my cutting skills are real nice and super even, <laughs> Um, I got 17 slices out of this loaf. All right, we're gonna do this. See how it tastes. Hmm, it's good. It's not like it's not like a pumpkin muffin or anything like that. It's just a good wheat bread with like little warm hints in there. So I, I would totally use this as like a sandwich bread. Which is good because I did not buy any bread this week because I thought, I'm going to make some bread this weekend. Mmm. Well, delicious. That's a good bread. You should make this one. This is a good one. If there was such a thing as a bread thirst trap, this is it. Oh, this is a good sturdy bread. Like, it's not super flimsy. Like, this is good sandwich bread. Look at that. I did such a good job, you guys. This is great. All right, that's it. That was the recipe. Um, thank you so much for following along. And if you end up making it, let me know. Uh, again, you you can actually like look up this company, um, the Bear Wallow Books, and they have an Etsy shop you can buy their cookbooks on. Um, they don't really have them on Amazon. I think there was one seller that had like two copies left. Um, but you can get them from the company directly. And it's a smaller business, so go shop small. Um, I think this would be a great Christmas gift for the novice and experienced bread maker or bread maker wannabe in your family because I am enjoying it. But again, thank you for following along. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you would definitely eat this bread um, because we're going to eat it real quick. And then subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd love to have you continue to follow along and just join me on my journey of well, bread making in this video series, but in my overall journey of creating a simpler, more frugal life. Thanks again for following and I will see you in my next video.